Well, hi, friends, and uh, good day. <laughs> uh, this is uh, our um, 31st program, and we're working with Rule 4 uh, in White Magic. We're calling it 4.3 because it's the third program in this fourth rule, and we're on page 132, and we are to... We're dealing with several things uh, that are apparent at this juncture to the careful, thoughtful student of men and motives. The first being that idealism and the sensing of the plan for humanity have a close relationship, just as the sixth ray and the third ray have a close relationship. And the next being that in sensing of the plan and its later materialization, human units are involved and men um, have perforce to be employed. The hierarchy isn't doing this uh, entirely on its own, not by any means. And uh, even though uh, those they work with, uh, and that is uh, we, are not uh, ideally suited, and those we work with uh, who have less ability are not ideally suited. Uh, human beings have to be used in this process, as the Christ has said, by human hands and human feet uh, shall the new age be built. And this is from the Agni Yoga um, painting. At least that illustrates uh, the idea it's called Christ in the desert. Then the third uh, factor that we become aware of uh, says the Tibetan here, this brings me to a third point. The problem and the difficulties with which the masters have to contend as they seek to further the plans of evolution through the medium of the sons of men. It's not that we are necessarily ideal material with which to work, as uh, was proven, uh, as the Tibetan attempted to work with some 50 um, students of the wisdom and uh, had to discontinue uh, aspects of that work, although in the long run it will not be discontinued, as it is a 275-year project at least. In the conclave wise, they make their plans. With judgment, after due discussion, they apportion the tasks. Then, to those who offer themselves for service and who have some measure of soul contact, they seek to train, uh, to transmit as much of the plan as possible. So all of this is uh, how the masters proceed, wisely, judiciously, um, Proportionally, proportionately, and yet here we are as human beings who have to be used, and uh, we certainly have our liabilities. Uh, but we do offer ourselves for service, and when we do that, um, perhaps we will be used. After all, what choice uh, do they have? Uh, Alice Bailey who we know was a marvelous worker, at least in our estimation, considered herself maybe not even second best, but maybe third best, but she was willing and could be used because of her uh, willingness. They impressed the plan and some suggestion as to its scope upon the mind of some man or some woman upon the physical plane. Now here are the liabilities. If that mind is unstable, you know, excessively uh, changeable and uh, subject to emotional currents or oversatisfied, if it is filled with pride, with despair, or with self-depreciation, the vision does not come through uh, with clarity of outline. If the emotional body is vibrating violently with some rhythm set up by the personality, or if the Physical vehicle is ailing and concentrated attention is therefore prevented. What will happen? Well, you know, this is likely the case with many 
and perhaps from time to time we have fallen into the same uh, condition and um, proved ourselves less than usable. If that mind is unstable or over-satisfied, pride of mind, or filled with uh, pride or despair, you know, uh, not having faith, uh, or with uh, that kind of attention to the lower self, which is always depreciating and thus uh, absorbed in a useless and very secondary activity, not even a desirable activity, the vision does not come through with clarity of outline. And uh, it is the vision, or let's just say, it is the mind which must be impressed by the vision. If the emotional body is vibrating violently with some rhythm set up by the personality, you know, reactive or filled with um, desire for maybe other things than the task at hand, or if the physical vehicle is ailing and con concentrated attention is therefore prevented, what will happen? The master will turn sadly away, distressed to think of the opportunity for service that the worker has lost through his own fault, or he will seek someone else to fill the need, someone perhaps not so fundamentally suitable, but the only one available on account of the failure of the first one approached. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure this happens uh, frequently and uh, is a sad thing, and we see that uh, the masters uh, are capable, apparently, of sadness and distress, not on their own account, but because of opportunities which could have been taken and because of the good that might have been done. Uh, it might, incidentally, <coughs> excuse me, it might incidentally be of value here to remind aspirants to service that much work uh, done by many is the result of overzealousness and is not a carrying forward of the master's work. Now, this is a um, sixth ray tendency. And, you know, this is fading out to some degree. But much work done is uh, the result of overzealousness and is not really a carrying forward of the master's work. With wise discrimination, he apportions the work and never lays upon one human being more than he can uh, adequately accomplish. And I'm reminded of, you know, slightly humorous uh, idea or thought from Master M, where he says, uh, do not put the load of a camel on a donkey. He's always comparing human beings to animals, and he says it gets their attention. Well, I guess more of us are like donkeys than camels, and we can only carry so much. So there is a wise apportioning of the work so that we can possibly succeed. He can and does train his disciples so that it appears to the onlooking world as if he accomplishes miracles, but forget not that the vast amount of work accomplished by one useful disciple only becomes possible when the control of all his three bodies is coordinated and his alignment accomplished. Uh, vast, well, look at Alice Bailey. That is a vast amount of work and uh, I remember her saying, uh, what was it? Uh, <sighs> why was it possible for her to get so much done? I forget the answer she gave. But she was talking about the great amount of work that, you know, she actually had uh, done. And uh, indeed, uh, that was, uh, it was a great deal of work. Well, friends, what have I done again? I've, uh, ah, it is working after all. I have to uh, be grateful that my little chronometer here that keeps me from running over and doing a five-hour program as I used to do, terribly daunting for the transcribers, uh, is now at work uh, preventing 
that type of uh, transcriptional disaster. Okay, um, so all the bodies have to be uh, integrated, coordinated, aligned, if a significant amount of work is going to get done. Foster Bailey's uh, statement, as Mary Bailey told me in 1980, he said, at least let me be useful. He who has a stable mental body that is strongly positive in reception from above, whilst negative to lower vibrations. Now here, basically, as we're as we're looking at these, the negative orientation uh, shuts out uh, the uh, influence from below, and positive orientation uh, takes in the influence from above. At least that's the way it is uh, presented in this particular case. Uh, he who has an astral body that is clear, uncolored, I suppose, by bias and tendency, and still, he who also has a physical body with steady nerves and stable rhythm, it will be like a casket, beautiful yet strong as steel, will preserve, will serve as a vessel, meat, for the master's use, a channel through which he can unhindered pour his blessing to the world. Well, a stable mind, uh, a still and uncolored astral body, a strong physical body. These are the requirements, and we can see wherein we measure up or do not. Yeah, so let's, you know, let's put it in. Stable uh, mental body, uncolored, and... Uh, Still astral body and uh, strong, um, well, strong and steady physical body. Steady nerves, steady nerves. And, you know, so often we do see that, that uh, there is a somewhat uh, nervous uh, affliction that comes with. Uh, contact with higher energies. I saw this work out in my own life. Uh, well, you know, we don't always know where we've been, but uh, Aquarius can affect the nerves. I've got a lot of Aquarius in my chart. And I think I was born in a nervous condition uh, with the moon there and Mars there, the two rulers, orthodox rulers of the chart. But gradually, gradually as life went on, it became more and more tempered. and. Uh, does it have to take so long to stabilize? Well, anyway, we have to present a useful and stable instrument <clears throat> for the master. Otherwise, he can't really use us in the way that otherwise might be possible. I look at periods of my life when I don't think I was as usable as maybe I am today. And maybe we can all <clears throat> assess that for ourselves and see what degree of usefulness uh, and what degree of usefulness we abide. Now, this uh, fourth factor which emerges uh, by those uh, close and careful students of human nature and uh, motive, human motive, the fourth. Uh, so, you know, the third was the degree of our usability, really. Fourth, it should be noted that even the great ones themselves have to lay their plans largely allowing for the lack of perception of those upon the physical plane through whom they have to work. Uh, it would be nice if there were more uh, direct uh, knowers of the plan, but um, that is not yet the case, although DK has given now so much about the plan and so much about the priority 
of his um, teaching. You know, a lot of this is given in the rays and the initiations. So the masters, they are handicapped and dependent upon their physical plane instruments. Uh, that's us again. Well, that is uh, we. <laughs> and uh, their main trouble concerns the point of evolution reached by the mass of men in the Occident. Certainly lately in the disturbed conditions of our times, uh, the not too exalted state of evolution of those in the West is being uh, sadly amply demonstrated. Remember that this point is indicative of the success of the evolutionary process and not of its failure because much, uh, because much yet remains to be done. The work of the lodge is often hindered. So uh, the state uh, in which we find ourselves actually uh, does indicate success, but there's still much to do. And we can't necessarily do all that would be desirable to do, or at least they think that way themselves, uh, because of the limitations of the instruments through which they must work. So again, the limitations of the instruments through which they must work. But, uh, uh, so it's a question of um, evolution, the point in evolution and uh, the problem is that here in the west well there are so many of the younger souls now in the east but uh, and although occultism is coming to the west still there is not quite sufficient evolution that uh, the instrument can be uh, adequate to all the master might otherwise do with it the point reached at this time might be expressed as a swinging from the rank materialism of the past into a growing uh, and profound realization of the unseen worlds without the balance that comes from self-acquired knowledge, uh, no uh, sattva. So we have uh, materialism and uh, uh, awe-inspired uh, awe appreciation of the possibilities. materialism and also uh, all inspired appreciation of the possibilities but uh, no real self acquired knowledge in other words we haven't really made the teaching our own through our own uh, efforts uh, over Okay, possibilities, possibilities, but um, no real balance. Without the balance, and that's the problem that comes from self-acquired knowledge. In other words, the teaching is still theoretical to us in large measure, but... Um, Although inspiring, the theory is inspiring, um, it has not been fully absorbed and cannot be fully applied. This would create a more uh, balanced situation. The forces that have been set in motion by the thinkers, the scientists of the world, the truly advanced religious men, and you know, maybe there are not so many, the spiritualists, the Christian scientists, the new thought workers, the theosophists, and the modern philosophers and workers in other fields of thought are gradually and steadily affecting the subtle bodies of humanity and are bringing them to a point um, where they can realize certain things. So where are we here? I mean, and notice who all he includes. Thinkers, scientists, advanced religious types, spiritualists, Christian scientists, new thought workers, theosophists, philosophers, and other that he feels of human thought that he does not mention. Um, all of these uh, thoughts produced by such workers are affecting our subtle bodies. Uh, I suppose our emotions and our mind particularly, maybe our theoric bodies as well, uh, perhaps. 
Uh, and what do we realize as a result? You know, the reality of the unseen world, the terrific power of thought, uh, uh, as emphasized by the great ones, Master Moria really emphasizes it, so does the Tibetan, the need for scientific knowledge on these two matters. And uh, now, in other words, we must prove, uh, must prove the tenets of the ageless wisdom. We must prove it at last, scientifically. <clears throat> so there is, um, in this uh, fourth uh, point, uh, the problem is the lack of adequate uh, perception of those that the masters must use. So they're, you know, they're kind of um, having to uh, realize that the extent of cooperation from the outer workers will not be what it could be because of simple lack of uh, perception and uh, the fact that the teaching has not been truly established uh, as a uh, practical reality in their lives. There's much great theory. Uh, I think a lot of us who are readers of Master DK have a lot of theory, but has it been made uh, truly real? Hmm. So point three is there, but you know, it's the point three deals with uh, inadequacy in the vehicles of the instruments that would be used. So here we have inadequacy in the uh, instruments, in the fields, in the vehicles of the instruments which otherwise could be used. Mental inadequacy, instability, uh, emotional turbulence, uh, physical weakness, you know. And as a result, uh, the impression cannot come through clearly and the force uh, that can be sent through the instrument will be uh, curtailed uh, less uh, even worse conditions might result, more instabilities, more turbulence, more weakness. Um, one day, I think, you know, we'll be in this kind of position where we'll have to be ourselves working through those who have to carry out uh, certain plans. Maybe some of us even now who uh, are working through groups, uh, let's say, to spread the knowledge of the ageless wisdom, we can be realistic about those with whom we have to work while not exalting ourselves, realizing there are many uh, instabilities and inabilities uh, still remaining in our own nature, which make it uh, difficulty, difficult for the masters to use us. So I guess a certain amount of humility, uh, cautious uh, treatment of the instrument so that uh, it is as fit as possible, and so that the masters can really use us. Uh, these things are the order of the day. If we would, you know, perhaps realize the the obstacles that we present to their high uh, and good intentions. Now, fifth, the fifth uh, of the factors that arises for the careful students of uh, human beings and of uh, motive, certain dangers which aspirants must watch as they seek to be of use should here be mentioned. This is just a collection of uh, difficulties. They must guard against overemphasizing one aspect at the expense of another part of the plan or vision. Now, you know, uh, it has been said that um, ray six is the ray of undue emphasis. And we're still very much uh, under the sixth ray. It's fading. And there are many people who are predominantly emotionally polarized in the world. 
the majority, so uh, we we emphasize our preferences uh, and uh, do not keep a balanced approach. We often emphasize our preferences and do not maintain a balanced approach. Uh, they must avoid unequal concentration of thought upon the part of... Oh, yeah. goodness, did I read this before? Or is there some kind of cryptonesia going on here where, where, where my eye sees uh, a head? I could swear I didn't see anything ahead, but there it is. And it is absorbed without one's knowing it. They must avoid unequal concentration of thought upon that part of the plan which appeals to them the most personally. So this is uh, with those who are active in preparing for the reappearance of the Christ. They'd like to do it in their own way and what the Master offers as the necessary steps for preparation might not appeal to them quite as much as their own idea of how to prepare. I think this was uh, emphasized by D.K. regarding the Christ himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. He had uh, worked out uh, his approach to saving humanity, helping humanity, and uh, the Lord of the world called for something more additional, something that the Christ uh, had not anticipated, perhaps. And uh, then uh, he said in response to the uh, presented vision of the will of God, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, Father, but thine be done. So that is uh, acquiescence at a very high level. They must uh, recognize the inability of the workers to continue to bring through the plans and to work together peacefully and steadily. Friction is uh, often avoidable. So let's just say unavoidable. Oh, unavoidable. A little Freudian slip here. Well, there's an aspect of friction which also is uh, avoidable. So uh, let's just say here, uh, okay, um, recognition of inevitable frictions, realistic assessment of the harmony of the co-workers. Um, so this is kind of a, a point, uh, we're going to say a point A here. And this is um, kind of a uh, point B. And uh, I'll put that in, you know, just to help us keep track. Point C. There are uh, obstacles, and any realistic long-term worker realizes that it is so. The uh, DK is speaking to us very straightly here. Balance is a very necessary factor, a very necessary factor. And um, personal preference must be set aside. To be set aside and um, realistic assessment of the liabilities uh, of their co workers, of the potentials for harmony and disharmony in the co workers. Uh, they must watch uh, for the creeping in of self-interest and ambition. It won't uh, occur with a great clatter. Um, it will uh, approach subtly, you know. And before you know it, there it will be. Creeping in of self-interest and of ambition, this would take uh, the attention down to the personality level. This would take the attention to the personality level. 
uh, from which it should be rising because we do not want to be those who are uh, whose ring pass not of consciousness is uh, strongly focused on our limited personality. They must guard against fatigue due to long effort in materializing the plan and the strain incident to high endeavor. Well, to forego peace, to forfeit rest, and in the stress of pain, to lose myself and find myself thus entering into peace. But, you know, for, foregoing peace and forfeiting rest. And, uh, you know, as the body gets older, as DK says, you have to watch out for the inevitable. Uh, he uses the word creaking and creaking. <laughs> well, you know, the, the older workers uh, do not quite have the natural uh, personal vitality that they may once have had. So um, the work can be damaged uh, if they remain in a constant state of fatigue. They're just not able to bring through. It's like, uh, you know, as we, as we were looking earlier, the master turns sadly away when he just sees physical disability, which uh, attracts so much of the worker's attention that it's not possible really to uh, continue the strenuous uh, kind of work uh, required. So guard against fatigue due to long effort in materializing the plan and the strain uh, incident upon the high endeavor. I'm pausing on that one, you know, here in a fairly uh, fatigued uh, condition, but persistent in my mind for sure. And uh, next, they must develop the capacity to recognize those who are sent to them, sent to help them in the work. And that is a subtle type of um, directing that occurs. Uh, let's see, where are we here? here? Here's where we are. So this is F. F. Uh, so, um, I think um, we recently had an event like that. Uh, someone of long, long service had found the need to retire a change focus, and uh, someone was really sent in. It's obvious. It, there was a fittingness to it all, and uh, I think uh, the test of recognition was passed. They must, above all, watch against failure to keep in touch with the higher self and with the master. In other words, um, let's, um, <laughs> let's just say um, one must keep one's meditation constant. You know, it's, it's possible one can get so busy that one fails to meditate or give opportunity for the solar angel or master to get through, to get through. And this is, uh, you know, and you can justify this. You can say, well, I'm so busy, I just don't have time to meditate uh, properly. But then again, the very inspiration upon which we depend would be uh, cut off. And so we have to uh, give opportunity to connect with the higher sources of inspiration if the quality of our work is to be sufficient. Uh, and then there is uh, yet another, let's see, H. Another point has to be remembered that has to be remembered is that the problem to be solved by all who are seeking to cooperate with the Great White Lodge has four objectives in view. So let's look at this uh, four objectives. First, that in the uh, working out of the plan, there is also the working out of karma. This karma is not merely individual nor purely national, but is part of the total 
working out of world uh, karma. So this will present difficulties and um, this working out will present difficulties and we must not uh, be uh, sidetracked uh, or overwhelmed by the appearance of these TIFCS difficulties. Second, um, another object is the preparing of an instrument for service in the inauguration of the New Age during the next uh, 200 years. This, I suppose, would be a group instrument, right? You would say a group uh, instrument. Well, I suppose by the time. All right. So um, it's not just the individual instrument. It is the group instrument. During the next 200 years, this was written, well, let's say this would take us to about 22, 25, something like that. Uh, as all of this was written uh, in the uh, late 20s. Another uh, object is the preparing of an instrument for service in the inauguration of the New Age. This is still within the period of the 275 years of the C Group project. Uh, by that time, the C groups will be uh, substantially established and they will no longer be in um, seed groups, but will have moved on to a fuller uh, demonstration. The integration of a group of knowers and of mystics is going steadily forward in all parts of the world and in all organizations. And this we have, uh, in a way, uh, Behind this is the new group of world servers. One group is being gathered, but its members belong to many groups. Okay, so this is uh, making out of humanity one great serving group, or making out of those members of humanity who are ready one great serving group uh, composed of many uh, groups of different kinds. To this group of knowers and mystics is given the opportunity of being a channel through which the hierarchy can work and through which the great ones can send their illuminating thought. Now it's been 90 years or so since all of this was uh, impulsed, maybe we might say in 1925 at the Great Conclave. It was an important time for the emergence of the new group of world servers. Um, and here we are in the year uh, 2018. Though it, uh, through it also, they can work for the uplift in the occult sense of humanity and thus aid evolution on every plane. According to the response of disciples, of mystics and of knowers everywhere, see, a mystic is not quite a knower, is it? So will be the rapid coming in of the new age, uh, and we might say, uh, or not. So let's see, what is the problem here? The gathering of this instrument of service, and I suppose, uh, making the adjustments within one's own attitude so that um, harmony and uh, right inspiration uh, can prevail. I hear, uh, here seek to sound a word of warning in the failure to respond, in the failure to adjust, construct and refine, the failure to turn the inner ear to those voices on the subtler planes which utter, quote, the words of reconstruction, you know, the forces of reconstruction under Gemini, may come the ultimate transference of the forces of reconstruction to other channels, the consequent withholding of opportunities and the ultimate discarding of the instrumentality of the group as a medium of service. Uh, so 
this is, um, let's say, a reconstruction. Con str uc is being attempted through the sensitive and occultly inclined OCC ULT, but uh, but other channels would perforce be used if the first intention does not work out. Okay, so this is the word of warning. If we don't respond to the opportunity proffered, other methods of reconstruction will have to be found. Um, may come the ultimate transference of the forces of reconstruction to other channels. I wonder how they mentioned, uh, not in this paragraph, but uh, maybe they will be mentioned. You know, perhaps uh, to those who are not involved in the esoteric life approach, that's possible. Okay, I would like to emphasize the statement and then to quote the words of reconstruction, begging all of you who earnestly desire to hear these words to study the introduction to the book Light on the Path. This is the book that uh, mm -hmm. Light on the Path uh, seems to be the Master Hilarion book, if I'm correct. Let it be uh, remembered that if the Great Ones have to change their plans as to this integrating group of mystics, it will be changed by the mystics themselves viewed as a group. Well, okay, um, so he's saying, look, take advantage of the opportunity offered here. And this light on the path is a, I carry it with me all the time, I, but read it too infrequently, a, um, a Master Hilarion book and very militant, as he says, a militant little treatise. Well, um, when you think about the former St. Paul, the sixth ray was very, very powerful, as with the fourth. And gradually, as uh, Budi began to take over, the second ray became powerful. But behind it all was the fifth ray monad and ultimately, apparently, the first ray monad. So it's not a very um, compromising little book, if I'm correct, that this is what he means, the light on the path. Hmm. All right, there we go. So take advantage of the whole, the, the, the lesson here is take advantage of the opportunities hierarchy is offering. Or, uh, hmm, or be set aside temporarily, while others do the necessary work. Well, that would be a pity, wouldn't it? It would be a pity. Okay, now, what have we here? So this is the, uh, the group of mystics gathering, and the working out of karma, these two factors. And now number three, and basically he's saying here, uh, four objectives. The, um, the problem to be solved has four objectives. That's what we're looking at here. Um, the problem to be solved by those who are seeking to cooperate with the Great White Lodge. Uh, work out the plan, but work out karma. Uh, take advantage of the group opportunity being offered. And um, 
uh, develop uh, the intuition. The third objective is the development of the intuition and discrimination of the disciples in the world and their ability to sense the higher vision and to achieve at the cost of the lower the consciousness of the higher plane. So the third objective, uh, let's call it the uh, elevation of consciousness into the intuition. And uh, the uh, developing ability to sense the higher vision. So this is required of us as well. So many requirements. Can we possibly fit ourselves to all of this? Fortunately, uh, we can move in a synthesizing manner, I think, and uh, not have to take each one of these requirements as a separate undertaking. Uh, each one of the requirements, uh, when addressed, and the positive gain, gains in addressing them, assists with uh, gaining facility in the other requirements. So anyway, we oftentimes have to sacrifice uh, the lower vision for the higher vision. The sacrifice of the lower vision and objectives for the higher. All right. They, that is we, will have to remember that the lower objective owing to its proximity will loom in many ways more attractive and can only be transcended at infinite cost. Well, they're, okay, you know, great cost. So, you know, sometimes you look in the mirror and you say, well, that's who I am. Uh, that is the, that aggregation, that, um, how does he call it a congestion? That congestion uh, of matter that we call the dense physical vehicle. And we think, there it is, it's so obvious, that's who we are. But that which is uh, easily and customarily seen does not convey the truth of what we really are. And it's the same here with lower and higher objectives. The more distant objective is more important, but less tangible. And the lower objective is more tangible and easier to recognize. The lower objective is more tangible and easier to recognize. Our, I see, recognize, our CZ. Intuition must be developed in many people and their sense of values uh, adequately adjusted before this group, which must inaugurate the new age, can measure up to the requirements. So uh, the, um, the adequacy uh, of, of hierarchically, hierarchically related group life depends upon the cultivation of, depends group life, sorry, depends upon the cultivation of the intuition. Present day troubles are largely due to the lack of intuitive perception in the past, and this fault lies primarily among the mystics of the world and not so much among the lower aspirants. So a mystic is a higher aspirant, apparently. All right, so let's, a mystic is a higher aspirant, and uh, psychism is not intuition. We have to remember that because there are many types of sensitivities which do arise in the consciousness, <coughs> they seem unusual. They haven't been with us since Atlantean times, and we mistake the psychic presentation for the true, formless, intuitive uh, presentation 
of the great ideas. So the trouble has not lain in the lack of idealism or even in the lack of intelligence and sincerity. It consists in the failure to sacrifice the personality at all times in order to make the intuitive realization demonstrate its realities. Well, this is a big, big demand. A big demand to sacrifice the personality at all times. So that intuition may demonstrate tangibly. Compromise has been permitted, and in the occult world, compromise is forbidden. I know some who are on the first and sixth ray who will be very happy to hear that, because it sort of confirms the attitude in which they are deeply schooled and in which they deeply believe and which they practice. So the failure to sacrifice the personality at all times. Well, which one of us has managed to do that? I wonder. I wonder. Hmm. I'll make it even bigger more important <laughs> and can we recognize those moments when we are being asked to sacrifice the personality you know the fatigue of the uh, physical uh, body the uh, the longing for relief that would change the activity from what must be done to something that one would prefer to do the directing of the personality towards objectives which are in the long run seem more personally satisfying rather than staying with what is required. So about compromise here, when indulged in, it leads to disaster and sweeps away eventually in ruin and in storm. The personalities of those who so stoop. Well, these are dire Dire words, dire, and um, being so dire, they deserve their own place <laughs> and their own enlargement. Compromise has been permitted, and in the occult world, compromise is forbidden. When indulged in, it leads to disaster and sweeps away eventually in ruin and in storm. The personalities of those who so stoop. People have sought to adjust the truth to the hour instead of adjusting the hour to the truth. And in diplomacy, they have endeavored to bring about as much a reality of the reality as they deem wise. Um, the masters are looking out for those who with clear vision, uncompromising adherence to the truth as sensed, because we cannot be sure that we always sense the truth, even if we think we do, and capacity to drive steadily forward towards the ideal. Oh, you know, I'm just, I have in mind to send this to a first-ray friend of mine <laughs> who, uh, certainly will understand. All right. Some of us on the second ray, we may tend uh, to shelter the personality of ourselves or others from such an uncompromising attitude. So this is the trouble. We have idealism, we have intelligence, we have sincerity, but we do not sacrifice the personality at all times in order for the higher worlds to demonstrate as they really are. I keep on reading this over, don't I? It arrests my attention. Compromise has been permitted, and in the occult world, compromise is forbidden. 
when indulged in it leads to disaster and sweeps away eventually in ruin and in storm reminds one of the law of repulse on the first ray the personalities of those who so stoop people have sought to adjust the truth to the hour the hour means circumstance right and I just put that in the hour means circumstance instead of adjusting circumstance or the hour to truth and in diplomacy and they've oftentimes said tk said what a good diplomat the second rate type makes and in diplomacy they have endeavored to bring about as much of the reality as they deem wise uh let's just say um not too threatening of their personality the uh, masters however are looking out for those with clear vision uncompromising adherence to the truth has sensed and capacity to drive steadily forward towards the ideal now what kind of factors will this involve? Um, number one, a recognition of the ideal through meditation. Two, its application to the present through one pointedness as we can spread our efforts and weaken the possibility of manifestation. Removal, number three, removal of the old and hindering thought forms through self-sacrifice, our enemy is ourself, and what we used to want to do, and those previous tendencies have not all gone away. Number four, a refusal to compromise through clear vision. Five, a discrimination that enables the disciple always to distinguish between the acts of the individual and the individual himself. You know, I, I condemn the sin, not the sinner. Six, realization that in the occult work, it is not permitted to interfere with personal karma any more than it is permitted to shield from the consequences of action. This entails, therefore, a refusal to interfere in anyone's business. That is, as regards the personality life, and yet involves a refusal to shirk the business of the larger cause. It is essential that workers learn to discriminate between the factors which make for personal liberty and those which militate against group liberty. So again, you know, the uh, individual values and group values are uh, contrasted. <coughs> well, this has been um, this has been very potent material. Now we've been dealing with results, and I don't think I'm going to go on to the uh, fourth factor. Hmm. So we are on page. It appears uh, one thirty-seven. And uh, the we we've dealt with the third factor, the third objective here. Um, yes, four objectives. Let's make this really really big, so we remember what it is we're looking for and what we're studying. You know, it's possible to go on and on and forget the actual theme. Uh, this is not desirable. So we have the working out of the plan, but accompanied by the working out of karma, which cannot over-distress us, overly distress. We have the need to uh, really build a an outer group, which the masters can use, and so they don't have to turn elsewhere. We have the need to develop the higher vision through the intuition. And uh, one of the problems there is that we don't sacrifice and we do compromise. And here, um, 
are six points which, uh, you know, break down and uh, clarify what we have to do in order to uh, avoid a compromise which, uh, well, which compromises the higher ideals. So that'll be far enough for us to go right now. <clears throat> and um, I've got everything almost in. Uh, so this will be the end of a treatise on white magic, a video commentary, number 31, rule uh, 4.4, 4, page, I think it is, 132 to 137. And let's just make sure that it is really 4.4, 4, okay? <sighs> I'm just, um, it was 4.3 actually. So 137, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. So um, this is rule end of 4.3. And we will be beginning with 4.4, .4, beginning of a treatise on white magic, uh, video commentary number 32. Rule 4.4 .4 from uh, page 137 and uh, onward. Okay. And there will be, and we'll begin with the fourth result, and we'll review these that we have done. So many requirements of the real occultist. It's sobering, it uh, is arresting, it causes one to pause and to ponder one's fitness and one's willingness. I've been in this a long time, so it seems long, you know. 50 years or more, more than that, and um, I'm pondering my fitness. <laughs> I guess it's healthy for us all to do that. Okay, thank you, friends, and we'll be back with uh, video commentary number 32 before long. Meanwhile, all the best.